This region has been thirsty and crying out for the revelation of God. For it was in the northern parts of California that I brought forth a movement, the Jesus movement. And God says now, I choose you south. I wish to reveal myself in a way that I have never done before, says the Lord. cities they will take the marketplace by storm watch and seek stand still and see the salvation of the Lord something happened in this garden that triggered a word what happened in the 60s and the 70s in California with this Jesus movement I've already prophesied this but he said this is the time for that major revolution now is the time. Wow. Welcome everybody to Code Breakers. And I have a very special Code Breakers to share with you today. Not only because of what my dad prophesied and what God said through my dad, but because of the events that are transpiring around us that are undeniable. And I became so excited about this particular prophecy that you just uh, that you just watched, but also more that my dad prophesied about what he didn't even want to call a revival. He called it the Jesus Revolution. And so before we go in, I have a few things I want to share with you that has been happening over the past few weeks. Um, the first thing is that I heard about the revival that's been going on in Asbury, Kentucky, which isn't far from where I am right now. And it was very exciting for me because of the prophecies that I am about to share with you, I have been watching for years to see a light that would indicate to me that we have entered the season that my dad was seeing when he prophesied these things. And so, as I saw all over the news and everywhere I'm starting to hear about this revival that's going on um, in Kentucky, and I started to hear about revivals going on in other places. I had been hearing rumors about kids on the beach in California just by the thousands getting baptized. And this is coming from friends who are witnessing this and telling me this is not coming from news sources because the media is not covering it. But something is happening around the world and I believe my dad saw it. And so before we dig into the prophecy part, uh, as far as my dad is concerned, I had some personal things to share. Um, first of all is the date. Now, what you just watched, you will notice the date on that prophecy where uh, dad was talking about the Jesus revolution was February 24th of 2013. And um, this past week, I um, first of all put on our YouTube channel, I put up uh, my dad prophesying about a Jesus revolution. Many of you may have already watched it. Uh, some of you haven't. And it was so exciting um, that I was invited to appear on a number of, of shows of people wanting to hear what did Kim prophesy about this because everybody's watching this revival and what is going on. Um, right now. And I went on uh, The Stone Zone with Roger Stone and uh, Elijah Streams with Steve Schultz, as well as The Thrive Time Show with Clay Clark and General Flynn, and then The Flyover Conservatives. And during the week, it was interesting about the dates because the day that I went on The Stone Zone with Roger Stone was February 22nd. We were not originally supposed to do that broadcast that day. We had, were supposed to do it the, the week before and both of us got sick and had to cancel and coincidentally, or not so coincidentally, ended up uh, having this interview, speaking about uh, stuff my dad has prophesied on the very day that my dad prophesied about the simple stone who many of us believe is Roger Stone. And so during the interview, I said to him, you do realize today 
exactly nine years ago, my dad prophesied your name. Well, as the week went on, um, I, I continued to share these, these prophecies um, on the interviews. And when it came to uh, the day I did the interview with the Flyover Conservatives, the date was February 24th. And we noticed as we were speaking about this, it was exactly 10 years to the day that my dad had prophesied about it. And there we were talking about it. And this is all happening this week. So we didn't want to wait anymore about sharing this because of the way in which it transpired. I didn't expect it to happen so quickly. And so I have put together some stuff today to show you. And it's really important that we pay attention to so many things that are going on around us right now because it is an indication of hope. It is an indication that God is moving in this time that it seems like he's not, where it seems like we are overwhelmed with corruption and evil, demonic imagery, a rejection of Christianity. And there is this sort of what is what is happening? Is God going to do something? Well, he is. He's already doing it. And the incredible thing is that he prophesied a lot of this through my own dad. Um, and my dad having that sort of 10 year track record on some of his prophecies is pretty incredible. And so something I wanted to share with you first was um, a connection um, that I personally had and an experience I had in early uh, 2019, it was in January of 2019, uh, one of my dad's uh, friends, dear friends, Chuck, who uh, played backup keyboards with my dad many times over the years, uh, ministered with him, contacted me and said that he wanted to take me to Catherine Kuhlman's grave. And um, I, of course, he, he also wanted to take me to the Bonnie Bray house, which was so interesting to me because at the time there was no talk of any kind of revival. This was 2019, January. I certainly wasn't thinking about those things at the time. But God used Chuck in that moment to take me to some key places. He took me to the Bonnie Bray house and he took me to Catherine Kuhlman's grave. And so I have a little clip here that I found and I wanted to share it with you before we go into the prophecies. Um, and this is old footage of, of uh, Lonnie Frisbee with Catherine Kuhlman. And these are key, uh, key people that God used during the, the, uh, the, the revolution, the Jesus revolution uh, that was going on in the 60s and 70s that he referred to in that prophecy. And um, so I want you to watch this little clip quickly because it's very interesting and, and there's, there's some similarities with my dad and the time that my dad got saved because my dad got saved in the early 70s, which was during this time period of when God had done this before. And uh, it was also, also very interesting because the country at the time was divided, very divided because of the Vietnam War and you had these rebellious hippies and that hippie movement, which was all free love and drugs and everything. And God actually did have a counter to that. So let's watch uh, the clip of Lonnie Frisbee and Catherine Kuhlman, and then I'll come back and we'll talk about it some more. One of the young men, Catherine, who has been so used of God is Lonnie Frisbee. And I wonder if Lonnie could just share with us some now. Well, the people tell me that I'm trying to look like Jesus. I can't think of anybody else I'd rather look like. <laughs> Jesus, he changed my life. And I, I kind of relate it to like David the psalmist when he says that thou hast lifted me up from the dunghill and he has placed my feet on a solid rock. And Jesus has lifted me up out of a horrible pit. He's washed my, my heart from all the sins and all of the the evil that I had gotten myself into and since then I'm all cleaned up now <laughs> and isn't that a wonderful feeling? yeah <laughs> and only Jesus could have done it that's right he's, he's, give, he's given me a message in my heart and that, that's a message he says go ye into all the world and preach the gospel he said he that believes and is baptized shall be saved and he that believes not shall be damned and he, and he said in his word to me, I would receive power after that the Holy Ghost would come upon me. And I waited upon the Lord, and the Holy Ghost came upon me, all right. <laughs> yeah, I got it down to the tips of my toes. And 
And so the message is that these are the last days and that Jesus Christ is returning really soon. And the prophet Joel and the prophet Peter said that in the last days that God would pour out his spirit upon all flesh and that his sons and daughters would prophesy and that his servants and handmaidens would speak forth the anointed word of God. I'm a servant of God and I'm a child of God and God is raising up from the very bottom and he's raising up the, the foolish and what the world considers That's dumb right. yeah. and he's, he's putting his spirit upon them and he's anointing them and they're starting to preach the gospel and thousands of people are starting to get saved everywhere and so it's thrilling it sure is <laughs> and so because these are the last days God has chosen himself some prophets and the church for so long has been expecting a certain mold of, of what a Christian should look like or what a Christian should be or what a Christian should say and God is blowing everybody's mind <laughs> because he's saving he's saving the the hippies and nobody thought a hippie could be saved <laughs> and so he's pulled us up he's given us the message we're going forth and proclaiming the good news Jesus is coming back repent and turn to the Lord and save yourselves from this evil generation because he comes to judge the quick and the dead how has he changed your life Lonnie well the Lord says if any man be in Christ he is a new creature all things pass away and behold all things become new he's changed me all around really inside out through and through <laughs> <laughs> and the things you once loved you have no desire for at all right just went right out and he says I'll take your stony heart of unbelief and I'll put a new heart within you and place my spirit within you too and so everything changes he says I'll become a well of living water gushing forth from within you and that well of living water gets out everything else and the new birth experience is real sure is <laughs> it's the most real thing in the world he's really really real <laughs> Yeah. So what I found so interesting about this particular clip, and I know it's an old one, but even better, um, is you're seeing um, not only uh, Lonnie Frisbee, but Catherine Kuhlman and Chuck Smith. These were key people during that, that season and that movement and the, the, uh, what God was doing then at that time. And I, I found it so interesting how Lonnie was talking about God lifting him up. Uh, and if you look at my dad's testimony, it's around the same time. My dad came from that era of hippies. He was a rock musician. He was in that drug scene. And he was dying in a street. And God sent somebody when he cried out the name Jesus to pick him up off that street and get him saved. And the first thing that happened to my dad when he went to church, because now he had this interest in church and Jesus, he was a hippie who suddenly was like, who is this Jesus? And when he went to church, they said to him, well, my dad, he, he didn't know anything. So he walked in the church. His hair was long down, down his back. He was wearing, a, I believe he said, he had told me he was wearing a red velvet bell-bottom suit, smoking a cigarette, and walked into church. And of course, they kicked him out. And the church at the time was not expecting, this is where it's interesting, they weren't expecting from these hippies who seemed so, they were looking at them like these people are just, they need to take a bath, they're on drugs, they're all about free love, like everything was, seemed sort of chaotic in what had been quite an organized world, especially in the church. So how do we deal with these hippies is what they were, they were, you know, dealing with. Now, I was telling you how I did all those interviews. I had no idea until about the middle of last week, so I'm already putting these prophecies out there and I'm excited about what's happening in Kentucky. There is a movie coming out, or it's, I think it's out now, called The Jesus Revolution. And I was blown away because here I had, a week or two earlier, posted my dad prophesying a Jesus revolution because I'm seeing what, 
what's happening in Kentucky and, and around the country and around the world. And then next thing, there's a movie coming out called The Jesus Revolution, which is the era in which my dad got saved. So I don't think that those things are just coincidences. I think that there is a definite purpose to this. And my father's involvement here was to be a prophet and a voice during a time when that would need would be needed again and we do find ourselves in that place again now they're not hippies now we might call them leftists or woke or whatever you want to call them but the point here being is that we as the church are in a position where we're going to have to figure out how to reach them not judge them and that's a very difficult thing for us to do in such a divided, uh, political, chaotic, and deceptive environment in which we find ourselves. And as well, the, the, the Christians in particular are under attack. And so I felt to share some of this with you because um, even, again, early in 2019, when, when Chuck took me, to see the Bonnie Bray house, which, which that was a revival that happened at the beginning of the century. And then to take me to Catherine Kuhlman's grave. And I have a picture of myself standing there um, at, at her grave. It was, it was quite an honor for me to stand there and to do that. And later on, the prophet Roger Teal prophesied over me, and some of you have seen that, uh, I think the very next month, um, and was speaking to me about, particularly he brought up Catherine Kuhlman. And so, I think that there is uh, so much more to be seen from this, but I don't want to waste any more time as far as the prophecy is concerned because you guys need to see what my dad prophesied. Because um, just as you heard Lonnie uh, Frisbee, I keep wanting to call him another name. I, I don't know much about him and I know his story is sad. I, 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 I know that uh, around about when his life ended, but God definitely used him. I know he was involved only, you know, during the beginning part of that revolution, of that movement. But he, he, there were things that he was saying there that really struck my heart and reminded me, number one, of my dad, but about the last days and about the God pouring out uh, his spirit upon all flesh and then what my dad was seeing. So um let's play the first prophecy and then we'll come back and talk about it a little bit because this is so good spirit of god says prepare yourself let it earth for that which i did in the 60s and the 70s i have revealed that this is that time again but it shall not be like them where it is restricted to just a few continents. This movement, says the Lord, will begin again in California. And there shall be an economic boost in California. And they shall say, but why California? Is it not the hellhole of, of America? God said, I don't care what it is. I will take the economy of California and show America that I will take the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. That I will take the low things of this world to make my light shine. And America shall look at California and say it's impossible. Look at the economy rising up. And I shall rejoice for it shall not be as a result of the economist but it shall be as a result of the movement that is beginning to take place. Like it unto the Jesus movement, it shall begin with the Hispanic people. For the Hispanics shall say, we must go into the streets, to the highways, to the byways, to the back street alleys, into the prisons. And suddenly all throughout West LA, it shall spread and spread and spread from house to house, from prison to prison. I shall reveal myself and the movement shall explode, not only here, but in America. And there shall be young people and they shall invent and they shall compose. And they shall say, what must we do next? And they shall take over the internet. They will take over the internet. And then they shall go viral and they shall say, Jesus is cool. And they shall speak that name. 
shall go from house to house and my fire shall consume the criminal activities in California and then it shall spread to New York then it shall spread to the south and I will unbuckle the Bible belt I will unbuckle the belt that is in the Bible belt and they shall explode with joy for this nation is ready for the greatest breakthrough ever and it shall be called a revolution like never before yeah. come on give them all a shout So, <laughs> I'm sitting here tapping my feet because I just, that song is so catchy and I think there's a reason for that too. I, it, once you hear that song, it's going to play over and over and over in your head. And I think that's because of the power of what he's, he's doing because he's um, in that moment looking into the future at a, a new kind of way in which God is going to do what he did when my dad was young and became a Christian during that first movement, that first uh, uh, revolution. But this time, he was seeing that it wouldn't be cons uh, constricted, or sorry, restricted to certain continents, that it would spread and spread. And we are hearing all over the world, we are hearing in, for everywhere from Uganda, underground in China, underground in Iran, that there is a movement taking place, that God is doing something most unusual and it's not coming through the mega churches and it's not coming through your um, expected avenues it's coming in a whole new way and uh, that would be the way God would work wouldn't it because in a world where information is traveling so quickly and so many things are going on God is smarter than us and he is doing something incredible that will not come about in the way in which we expected. And this is what I was getting from what dad was prophesying. And um, interesting that he saw California as well, because California is not doing well. And I'm someone who lived in California for 13 years. Um, my dad uh, uh, moved us, uh, first moved to California. I followed him because I followed my mom and dad wherever they moved, and so I ended up there too. And I know California, I know Hollywood. I lived there for a long time. And so for him to be prophesying this about California is, is also a most unexpected thing, especially when he's talking about the economy. But he specifically is saying that it won't be because of the economists, but because of this movement that's taking place. And so I don't know exactly, I couldn't tell you exactly, but this is very exciting. And if you're watching me right now, you should be very excited because he was seeing what God was gonna do through the Latino community, particularly pinpointing West LA and how they would go from house to house and prison to prison and something that would be ignited within the Latino community. And I know that in that community they will not be accepting of many of the things on the left that is being presented right now and uh, um, so interesting that from from the Latino community uh, uh, it will be ignited there in the in the California uh, region and I, I, I find that so exciting also because of of other things dad's seen about about um, the Latino community in America and what would happen. And also how exciting, and this leads me to, to the Asbury, Kentucky stuff, is he saw, dad saw young people taking over the internet and creating so much that they're, they'll be saying, what can we do next? And they'll go viral and they'll say, Jesus is cool. Now, one point that I have been I've been drilling into anybody who will hear me from the beginning of uh, when all the Trump stuff started and when all of this woke stuff started is that, especially when it comes to young people and school, one thing that young people do is rebel. It is just how it goes. It's part of the flying the nest thing. And some kids are more rebellious than other kids, but kids rebel. And so if you have all of their teachers and everybody just just drumming into them a certain way of thinking and a certain way of seeing, they're going to rebel against that. And so I can see how going towards Jesus and Jesus becoming cool for that younger generation is a possibility as a rebellion against what we're seeing now to rebel, because that's what young people do, 
and say, well, you're forcing this on us and going the other way. So I do see that as a possibility. And I have for years in my own heart, in my own mind, thought that, the, that we are going to see that, that we're going to see a rebuttal to this in this next generation that's going to rebel against all of this stuff that we're fighting against now. And so that also is extraordinarily hopeful. But I actually have some footage of Tucker Carlson uh, from Fox News. Um, you know, I'm not a big media person anymore. I really don't trust any of the mainstream media, including Fox. But I do watch Tucker, and I have found that, that, that so far, uh, um, uh, Tucker's been very reliable. And I really liked that he paid attention to this and covered it. So let's watch a, a, a news clip of Tucker Carlson at the Asbury, Kentucky Revival and listen to what the girl says to him. And a lot of people are starting to figure that out. And the good news is a lot of people are starting to think more about what happens when you die. They're becoming much more interested in the spiritual life, which has been basically extinguished in the public square for a long time. So here's a sign that people are becoming more interested. Asbury University, which is a private Christian college in Wilmore, Kentucky, outside Lexington, began hosting a prayer service a week ago, but it never ended. It's still going on. People just keep showing up from around the world. The university has even set up overflow chapels to accommodate demand. Here's what it looks like. So we keep hearing about this, there haven't been many news stories on it, but it's all over social media, on TikTok actually, of all places, and reports that people are flying in from Singapore and New Zealand to join whatever this is. And so we thought it'd be worth finding out, what is it? Allison Perfader is the student body president at Asbury University, and she joins us. And Allison, you're so nice to come on, thank you. What, it, what is this, do you think? Right, what is this? That's what we... <laughs> I mean, that's the question, right? And um, a, a theme or a Bible verse that we've all been sharing with each other is Habakkuk 1. And the Lord says, look at the nations and watch for I'm doing something in your day that you wouldn't believe if you were told. And it's happening and we can hardly believe it. Well, it seems remarkable. I mean, so many stories, you see them and you think that's very different. I'm not quite sure what it means, but it's worth learning more. So my understanding is this began in a completely conventional service and a boy got up and started talking about his own flaws and then it just something changed in the atmosphere and it never ended is that fair that's completely what happened um so here at asbury university three mornings a week we have chapel at 10 a.m sharp the whole student body gets together and we we sing praise to the lord and we hear a message from a speaker and for seemingly no reason at first on on wednesday february 8th it didn't end and that's that's kind of the logistical side of what's been going on and then you know, on the on the deeper side of things, what's been happening here since Wednesday is there's a there's a young army of believers who are rising to claim Christianity, the faith as their own, as a young generation and as a free generation, and that's why people can't get enough. That's amazing. So you, you felt like something like this was going to happen because everything finds equilibrium. I think. Who are the people who are coming? Where are they coming from? Um, we don't know most of them. Um, we've obviously been getting calls, hundreds of calls to the university switchboard number, um, but we have friends here from Brazil, from Indonesia, um, almost every state, um, and, and they just keep coming, and, and it's no wonder, you know, and it's like you said, I mean, especially in the midst of tragedies like what we've seen in Michigan State University, and, and even yeah. farther back to 2020, especially our, our generation was impacted so much, and so you have to wonder, you know, what's going to break? And in this case, the Holy the Holy Spirit has interceded for us here at Asbury and and uh, across the nation. I assume you don't know how long this will continue. Uh, I could not tell you, and I wouldn't wouldn't want to guess. <laughs> no, you, no, you wouldn't. Allison, thank you. Great to see you. Appreciate. Thank it. you. Well, so you heard what she said. She said the Holy Spirit has interceded for them. 
And what's so beautiful is one kid on a regular Wednesday where they would have their little service together, one kid got up and spoke about his flaws, basically confessed his sins, and it, it, it ignited something in these kids. And you remember my dad prophesying they're going to take over the Internet. And uh, even Tucker there makes a point of saying this is taking over the Internet. So you see the fulfillment of what my dad was prophesying there, um, and I just love how she talked about the young army rising up because that's what my dad prophesied for years, were the warriors, the warriors of the new millennium, and here to be living this. And it, it does make me sad that my dad is not here to see it, but I know he's in the cloud of witnesses watching it, and I know he saw it beforehand. And so it, it number one, makes me very proud, but it also makes me very excited and hopeful because a young army is rising up and God's raising them up. It's not happening under one church, one ministry, one denomination, or, or even one country. These are kids that are just flocking towards God because they can see when you look out in the world, go to Netflix, find Jesus. Go look anywhere, see if you can find Jesus anywhere. There is a distinct attack and this is the enemies, this is the principalities and powers in the air that are influencing people who are able to be influenced because they have not been grounded in Christianity. And so people who are not Christians will not be prepared, will not know how to see. But we have the advantage of being able to understand, to discern, and to know what to do in this time. That is an advantage we have in this battle. And so I just, I had to show you that because uh, th this has gotten me so excited. And note, she, she talked about people coming from Brazil and Indonesia. So this is not just about Kentucky or even America. And so let's go to uh, another prophecy right now because I want you to see what else my dad was seeing and how it all ties in. So let's watch that now. What I saw when I was captured, and I went between time and space and eternity it was like I was going through a curtain through a doorway and I saw things and I heard things and I said but Lord so many have looked with disdain upon California so many have looked with disdain upon America and yet you have spoken kind words to me why did you send me to this nation why did you send me to end my life in California Lord, I, I, as I was praying, the Spirit began to show me things. I saw, I saw emblems for, for the prosperity of His people. Your soul must prosper first, He said, before anything else can prosper. The soul of this nation has been wounded not from outside but from inside self-infliction upon the soul of this nation I heard these words good words from Malek Yahweh I heard these words coming from him the angel of the Lord has been commanded by the light of the people who are praying. He has been summoned by the people and he is resting his feet upon nations while the battle rages setting a flame to those who are ready. I heard him speak of this nation and other nations that he has chosen. Asia, single out by demonic powers to cripple this nation. I say, ha! I left them who would think that the spirit of the Lord that brings liberty would be so easy to trick. Asia, you and your young ones in North Korea, in South Korea, in India, China, Hong Kong, and all the regions of the Far East, to the Middle East will link up with young people in America. This revolution shall spread and the sounds will be so unique 
that it is undeniable and church leaders will stand up and condemn it as they've done before these Pharisees mean nothing to me for the soul of this nation is agitated where does our energy come from have I not told you the time is coming and now is where it shall be revealed but how unusual shall it happen okay so it did take quite a sort of a he went into a minor key there you could see and he was seeing some things there my dad was and I just I kind of want to just go through that a little bit with you guys um, the first thing I noticed was my dad was actually asking God questions as he was prophesying why did you send me to because he sees it he's prophesying about California he's seeing all this stuff He's seeing this revolution, and he, and he says, why did you bring me to California? Why did you bring me to end my life in California? And I don't know how much my dad really noticed about what he was saying there as far as consciously, but I think about it now, and I look back at it now, and that is where my dad ended his life. He did end his life in California. And so in the middle of this, he's asking God while he's prophesying and actually seeing it, which is... It's very sad for me, but it's also, I think, tied in and important. And um, at what level, I'm not sure. But another thing that I thought was so interesting is that he spoke about the prosperity of his people, but how our soul must prosper first and how the soul of this nation has been wounded, not from outside, but from inside. Self-infliction upon the soul of this nation. And if any other time I, I, in my lifetime and anything I know, um, I have not seen what I have seen occurring in America, um, not that I know of in any country ever, ever, anywhere, to be so hateful of themselves. And you do see that reflected when you, when you watch the news, when you watch, people are very, there is this sort of, it is a self-inflicted thing, and that is the enemy doing that. And I found it so interesting also when we're thinking about the, the revival and the kids in, in Asbury, Kentucky, and as that's spreading, um, he saw the angel of the Lord being commanded by the light from the people who were praying. That is so important because here the people are praying. And, and, and he said that he had been summoned and he was resting his feet upon nations. Now that is a powerful, powerful image because what dad was seeing was the people calling out and the angel coming. And that is such a, 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 an incredible image and a reality, I think, of what we're experiencing right now. Also, the fact that he brought up Asia, singled out by demonic forces to cripple this nation. We know what is going on with Asia. We know what is going on in China, Russia, Iran. We talk about it on current events with mom all the time. And um, I found it so interesting that he said, uh, uh, you know, God is about liberty. How could he be so easy to trick? He's not. And that's, that's what this is about. He's not so easy to trick. And dad also saw that the church would, would condemn this and saying that those Pharisees mean nothing to me. What he's talking about is the religious spirit who, who expects a revival or something like that. They have an expectation of how it's supposed to go. And if you look back to the 60s and the 70s with the hippies and that movement and how it happened there, everything that happened then did not happen the way people expected it to happen. And we are seeing that again, but on a much larger scale. This is something I believe is spreading globally, has been spreading globally. And um, it's, it's, it's fascinating as well as the fact that he, again, my dad brought up energy. Now we have had a lot of discussion about energy um, in, in, especially in the past few years, but right now this is, a, this is being amped up because people are talking about global warming or climate change, whatever they're calling it now. And energy, energy, energy. Even if you go look at Nikola Tesla stories, you look at the stories of pyramids, everywhere you look they're talking about energy. And God has promised an energy source, so that's so interesting to me as well. Um, and you know, um, before I go on, I, I, I just want to take a moment to thank the warriors. You know, I've talked about the warriors of the new millennium and those of you who have been with us for years when dad was still alive and for many years before that and you're still with us. And something, you know, that I've, I pointed this out this past week as I did a series of interviews. Um, 
you know, we're a ministry and I see these other these other people, conservative shows and Christian shows, and they have sponsors and things. And that's not something we can do or had ever even thought of doing. And the way that we have been able to carry this ministry after losing my dad um, has been only because of you. Because you, the warriors of the new millennium that he prophesied about, who have continued to support us over the years, your support is what allows us to give you an uncensored point of view because the Christian point of view right now is being censored. If you, you know, you, you can go to our social media platforms, YouTube, Rumble, uh, Twitter, all of them, or whatever, there's so many now. We are on all of them because we believe we need to be a light in a dark place. Um, but, you know, uh, we get censored terribly. Uh, we do not make money from anything that's on social media. That's our way of getting this information out to people. And so in order for us to keep going, we rely on your support and your support only. Again, like I said, we're a ministry. We can't have commercials and sponsors and nor do we have any interest in doing that because we're not here to make money. We're not a business. We just have this task that we've been given. This was laid upon us. None of us expected it. I mean, my dad was the, was, this was dad's thing. Even for me, it was dad's thing and I supported him. And now mom and I had to make a decision when dad passed of, do we keep the ministry going or not? And we really felt God telling us that we did need to do that because what he prophesied wasn't fulfilled. And those prophecies are being fulfilled now. And my dad, I look at it this way, I, you know, you know, um, I can't really compare one prophet to another because the expression is so unique that you can't even do that. And so, you know, I can only speak to my dad and what my dad did and what my dad prophesied. But what he did was so incredible, so true of a prophet that he didn't even need to be alive for this. So yes, we have many prophetic voices who I respect and love dearly. But when I'm looking at my dad, He's no longer with us. And all that stuff he was prophesying is only now coming to pass. There was no way he could have known formulated dates. I mean, lining up a decade or lining up exactly. So. There's no way he could have done that on his own. That was God through him. And so what we're continuing to do now at the House of Destiny is God through us. And that's all our desire is. And so I really, um, you know, it, it's, it, it's, it's such a difficult thing to to, to figure out how are we going to keep going and how are we going to run this. And it's because of you that we've been able to do that. And so I encourage you to continue to support us because we have a platform that is uncensored and that is the House of Destiny that you're watching from me from right now or our app. And um, those are places that have not only prophecies, but we have, we have grown this. We, have, we, we planted little seeds and we've watched them grow. And the network that my mom and dad dreamed of is now a reality. And that's because of you supporting us. And so I encourage you to take a moment to think about how can I help them? How can I help them keep bringing these prophecies out? Because there is still that, that prophet's reward. My dad was the vessel that God was speaking through. And he didn't even need to, like I said, he didn't even need to be alive. That's how good it was. But we have to give this stuff to you now. And the only way we can do that is through your support. And we have many ways of doing it. And, um, you know, you can go on our website. You can, you can give by mail. You can give uh, via our app on our website. Any, any way you can. Whatever God puts upon your, your heart to help us to keep bringing this to you, um, I ask you to go before God and ask him if you should give to us and, and support us and, and, and how much. And uh, you, you do not know how much you are helping us and how much it means. And uh, we are so grateful that you warriors of the new millennium recognize that need and have continued to support us because we couldn't have made it without you as far as we have because now we're, we're going into almost seven years since dad died. But look how many prophecies are coming to pass. And so I just, I wanted to take a chance to explain that to you so that you can understand that, that your part that you're playing is huge because without you, I wouldn't be able to sit here and show you any of these prophecies and no one would know anything about them. And so I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And also, 
uh, I thank God for putting us together and for putting us in this most unusual time to be alive. And so I, 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 before I went on with more prophecies and clips to play for you, I wanted to just take that opportunity to thank you and encourage you to keep supporting us because we, we do need it. And so um, anyway, let's go on. Um, I, um, like I said before, I had released on YouTube just the, the raw footage of Dad. You know, I've played you some clips today, but you can actually go to the Kim Clement YouTube channel and watch. And also on Prophetic Rewind, I put it on the full broadcast unedited is on Prophetic Rewind, which is the broadcast I put out every Monday. And you can go to the House of Destiny app or network to, to watch that. And I put that up this past Monday so that you can watch in context, raw footage of the entire thing, the whole song, which let me tell you, the worship and the music and the song is just as important as the, the words prophesied. And I'm telling you again, once you hear that song, it's gonna be playing in your head and you're gonna be singing it in your car. And so, um, but, but again, during all of this, I did not know that the Jesus Revolution movie was coming out. And honestly, I have not even watched it. And I made the mistake when I was on those interviews last week of saying it was Franklin Graham's movie and it is not. So that's how little I actually know about the movie. But the fact that the Jesus Revolution movie came to my attention after I put up those videos is very crucial to me as a Christian that God is showing me something that I need to share with you. And so I found a clip. Uh, Kelsey Grammer um, is in the film. And I found just a short clip I wanted to play because of how emotional he gets and how you see that playing uh, the role in this movie uh, has had an effect on his life. And so it's interesting how God works to be able to reach different people in different ways. So watch this clip. Wow, that's a scene from Jesus Revolution. Tell us about it. It's a nice movie. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Really I sweet. mean, yeah. uh, you're tearing up. Yeah. I Watching see you getting emotional. <laughs> what, are, what are you feeling? <laughs> Can I play doctor? Uh, what yes, do you of feel? course. Um, I, I, I love this movie. Yeah. I really love it. When, my, when we first saw the first cut, uh, sat down in our home and, and Kate saw it. She said, oh my God, it's the best thing I've ever done. She started crying. <laughs> but uh, he's, uh, he's a man looking for his own faith and finds it as well. Uh, a man whose church is empty and he can't get uh, traction and he's starting to think he's gonna be fired from his job as a pastor. And uh, uh, this hippie comes into his life and he finds a new purpose. And uh, started a movement that is still still going. So I mean, it's extraordinary. Story. Yeah, it's a true story. You're Chuck Smith, Chuck Smith is uh, the guy I played. He died in uh, 2014, I think. But uh, the number of people who came up uh, and said, oh, you're playing Chuck Smith. Oh, I, I listen to him all the time. Or uh, and they say, uh, he's, uh, he, mar he married us. Or uh, I was baptized by Chuck Smith. Uh, you can see this light in their eyes. And, So even watching that myself, I get a little bit emotional because you can see what an impact it had on Kelsey Grammer to play Chuck Smith. And you, you probably remember seeing Chuck Smith there with Catherine Kuhlman and, um, and Lonnie Frisbee in that first clip I played for you. Chuck Smith was crucial in, in that Jesus uh, movement during the 60s and 70s. And I'm still learning about it. I actually don't know very much about it, but we are gonna be doing a part two on this Code Breakers. So I'm gonna fill myself in and watch the movie because I have more prophecies, not just this one day that I'm playing for you today. I have so many, my dad prophesied about this. So we're gonna be covering this in more than just today. And so you need to keep looking for Code Breakers because I'm gonna do a part two on this really soon. Um, but I do feel that since I, I realized I had such little knowledge about what was going on there, you know, except for just little bits of information. I'd really like to watch the movie and uh, educate myself a little bit more and see what God shows me. And I encourage you to do the same. Um, after watching today, if you have anything God's put on your heart or something you think I should know or maybe I missed, you can email me at codebreakers at houseofdestiny.org. And that email will be on the bottom of the screen for you to read, but I'll say it again, codebreakers at houseofdestiny.org. And that is a, an email address I have set up specifically for when you're watching prophecies, if God shows you something, 
or if you have information to share it with me. And those emails go directly to my phone. And it is a busy email, so I can't always answer, but I am reading all of them. And uh, it has been very, very helpful over the years. So I encourage you to please write to me at codebreakers at houseofdestiny.org to give me information. Um, but before we go any further, we have more prophecy. I have some more stuff to show you. So I have another prophecy clip, and this is very interesting of my dad. Uh, let's play that, and then we'll come back and talk about it. I saw emblems. I saw two crowns. I saw two crowns, golden crowns, an investment. I saw two big leaves, and they were blended together. And then something unusual happened. I was taken into the atmosphere. And I saw a formation of a planet. Now I'm not even sure in my own mind what this means because I don't know, I'm not that bright. But I saw planets being formed. Planets that were not, that will be. And in their formation, a strange light and an energy. They shall say this, there is no such thing as that planet but it is something that is being formed at this very moment for the purpose of my people. You are that important to me, says the Lord, that I would do something that is not yet and bring from it and fashion that which will make you and your children prosperous. Do you believe that I'm able to do it? Go, come on. smiling I'm smiling like this because wow he actually just said it you just heard him say the Jesus revolution and you can hear him if you listen a little before because he was prophesying about the two crowns an investment I'm not sure what to think about that I remember when COVID first happened it was the coronavirus and corona means crown and we were wondering was he seeing it then but he was seeing an investment I'm not sure what that's about again Codebreakers email, if anybody can help me out with that, as well as the formation of a planet, that the planet stuff. That stuff, I, I, I don't know. And I think, obviously, we will see it, uh, whatever it meant. I know he, I could see he was struggling to understand what he was seeing. Um, but uh, that, that was kind of an interesting part, but I left it in because I'd like to hear your input. Maybe you, it's, is, it, is it tied in with energy? Is it, what, what could it be tied in with? Um, as well as the two big leaves, I've heard people who work in uh, coding and computers and stuff have said that uh, two big leaves uh, uh, and the way he was describing it uh, was sounded to them like what is called a Merkle tree, but I don't know enough about it to explain that to you. So again, anybody who knows about that, email me, let me know, uh, or share it with us in some way. Um, but I think the most important part about that piece was him actually getting the words, the Jesus revolution. And uh, when I was on Thrive Time with Clay Clark and General Flynn last week and played that prophecy for them, General Flynn actually sat up and said, wow, because he heard him actually say, and he was looking at the Jesus Revolution movie poster. So I know uh, when people are hearing that now, 
I mean, I, I released the, this prophecy before on Prophetic Rewind and on YouTube years ago, uh, just because I knew that was coming and it's just been something I've been anticipating. And so to share this with you today has been so exciting, but um, you hear him singing and you can sort of hear him starting to get it. And you say, Jesus, Revelation. you can hear him singing it under his breath. And then he just comes out with it. And it's so exciting. And, um, you know, that's, you know, way beyond what I imagined, uh, even when I was releasing these uh, prophecies years ago. Uh, you know, Dad had already passed away, but I had started to release stuff. And, uh, you know, there's just something about this that's, that's very special and very hopeful. And so I am excited today to be able to bring you some hope and some light and also some confirmation, I know, for a lot of you. And um, that's, that's very important for us as Christians um, to have a glimpse of the future and what to expect. And so I am going to come back uh, in the next week or so, uh, depending on how long it takes me to gather these clips, because I've found a number of prophecies about this. So please do keep your eyes open for more code breakers. We will be releasing these. As soon as I've found stuff, can put it together and get it to you. I'm going to be doing that because I think that, um, I don't even think I know this is the season um, that he was seeing and prophesying about. And this would be the counter to what we see the enemy doing in the world right now. And so um, I'm going to say goodbye to you. But I've, um, I've asked everybody to play just uh, at the end now as I say goodbye another portion of that same day that we've been watching, but it's just the song. And I want you to just watch it and listen to it. Because uh, again, the prophecies, you can hear it in the music, the prophecy, the sound dad always used to talk about is in that song and it's gonna stick in your head and you're gonna to wanna to share it with people. And it is a hopeful song and it is exciting. And so I just wanna thank you all again for joining me today for Code Breakers. Again, look out for part two on this cause it's coming and uh, let's go ahead and play them that, that song and I'll see you next time. Where